Okay, so I've had a lot of questions on some of these real basic, easy little DMX uh, decoders and how these are all working with Laterama. Um, so instead of going back and forth with private messages on Facebook and email to all these different people, because I'm forgetting who I've talked to and where I'm at with it, I thought I'd put together this little video to try to explain it. Um, a lot of times it's easier to see it than to, to do anything else. So here in Lightorama, I'm going to open a brand new sequence. We'll do a, uh, we'll do a new musical sequence. Doesn't really matter. Um, here are our music, Christmas. I'll do this one. So this gives you your basic setup uh, scene here. Um, for right now, I'm going to leave this default and just show uh, one Lightorama controller. Um, and we'll show 16 channels on there. Just to explain the differences in the network. So this is what you'll get when you come in. Uh, that's your regular Lightorama. So to start with the DMX, you're going to come up here. You're going to go Edit. Then here to your preferences and come up here to your network preferences. Now in network preferences you can see you have a COM port here that's um, your first communications port. This is your first network. This is a lighter on the network. Um, on my computer this is COM5. Yours might be something else but this is your basic uh, lighter on the networks. That's the first one. So that's what I use to talk to all my regular LR controllers um, running the LR protocol. Now down here under DMX Universes uh, where it says adapter, this is my DMX dongle. I'm using the uh, Entech uh, OpenDMX, uh, the Entech Pro. Um, I've got the uh, Entech Open as well, the, the blue one, blue box down here. Um, that I use for testing. The difference in the two is the blue one uh, relies on your computer to run the timing. The Entech Pro uh, does the timing itself. So uh, if you have an older computer, especially if your show computer is an older computer, I'd recommend going with the Entech Pro. It also has the ability to input as well as output the DMX uh, networks, which is important if you ever get to larger software, uh, something like Madrix or or something that does the automatic sequencing. So, so that's where we're set up in our network preferences. Um, so this is a separate network. Our DMX is a separate network than our Lightorama is. So I have two dongles, one for Lightorama and one for DMX. So click OK. So to set up these channels, we'll come in here to our, uh, let's go up to tools here. And we'll do channel configuration. So that brings up, this is our first Laterama um, controller. So you can see we've got 16 channels on the Laterama network. Um, under network, you notice it's listed as regular and then the, the unit ID and which circuit you're on. Um, so this is all very basic, very simple. So we're going to come down here, we're going to go add channels. And we're going to add, uh, well, I'll show two of them, so we'll add six channels for our two DMX devices that are connected here. So as I scroll down now, you can see we have six more channels. They're not named, um, and there's nothing assigned to it. So under type here, we're going to select DMX Universe for these channels. And you can do this all at once too. There's a lot of different ways to do this. I'm just showing it this way for purposes of the example. Now on the controllers, they can be any channel from 1 to 512. Um, I think for these ones, the little node string here is channel 146. And the uh, modules over here is channel 131. So. I'll come in here, 
under network um, and I'm going to list universe 1 because that's what my DMX dongle is listed under in our network preferences. So under channels now we'll list this one as 146 past it. And these it really doesn't matter what um, what order they go in um, because the the DMX is not dependent on any sort of order. So there's 146, 147, and 148. And we'll change those colors. This one's red. This one's green. This one's blue for our RGB. And we'll do the same thing with the second one here. Red, green, and blue. Um, and our second controller was 131. Past it. So we'll make those channels 131, 132, and 133. So there you can see we've got our two DMX dongles now, 146, 47, 48, and 131, 132, 133. So that's it as far as how they're set up. Um, we'll go ahead and we'll name this one uh, RGB tree string. And we'll lay this one RGB modules. We're all done there. We'll click OK. Now you see in our sequencing window, here's our original Letterama controllers, and here's the new DMX controllers that we just added. Um, now Letterama supports the RGB programming, so what we're going to do is instead of selecting each one of these colors individually and trying to do the color mixing in our head, we'll highlight over the red one. We're going to say convert to RGB channel. And we get a pop-up box that asks us what do we want to call this and which channels do we want to use. So we want to use the red, green, and blue right in this order um, to do this. Now we can do these one at a time, but we can also uh, do them all at the same time. We click down here, also do this for the following channels, and we'll do it for the next two channels. So when we click OK now, you can see that Lightarama has converted what was six channels of RGB channels down to just two. So we have one channel or one programming line for each display element now instead of for each channel. So if I run this one out and I do an on command, it's telling it on to all three of those channels so I get white. So now I can use my color mixing tools here um, if I want to change that white over to red, I just drag the area that I want that transition to take place. Um, if I want to do a solid color, I'll change that to red on red, drag across. Let's say I want to do a red into green, put that right there. this transition of red into green. I'll do green section for a while. And then um, I don't know, let's do something something different. Let's do some crazy color because that's another nice option with the uh, 
DMX is that you don't have to pick a, a certain color. Um, there's lots of keys online for the different values to get a certain color, you know, the perfect purple or whatever. Um, I'm just going to show one here. So if we take our red up to 256, uh, green to about 175, and blue to 75. That looks like an odd color here in our color mixer. Um, but on the modules, this is the equivalent that I found to an incandescent bulb, or pretty close to an incandescent bulb. So we'll click OK. So we've got that now programmed as this. We'll do a slow fade over about five seconds to get into that color. Um, do that for a little while. So that's about 15 seconds now total that we've gotten done, which should be enough to show us some purposes of comparison. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll paste that down to both lines. You can see we're doing the same thing on each of the controllers at the same time. Um, I'm going to set this just to play the uh, visible screen. So we're just going to play this little bit here. And I'm going to set it to loop so we can just see what this looks like over and over. So now that I have control lights checked, when we play this, we're actually going to be outputting over our DMX dongle to the uh, the two modules that are plugged in. So to kind of show how all the rest of this is connected, from our USB we come down here to, uh, this is the Intec Open, this is the cheaper one, the $60 one. I said I had some problems running this with the timing on the, uh, the ancient laptop, so I've gone to the Pro to run the show, but this one works great for my testing and stuff. Um, you can either get the adapters that will convert this XLR pinout to an RJ45. Um, I just added a, a Cat5 coupler on mine with a little rubber grommet through the, the case just to make it easier. Um, and I like using these little couplers. Uh, that way I'm not wiring anything, don't have anything exposed. Um, I fill these up with uh, dielectric grease when they're out in the yard and I haven't had any problems with them yet. So from our DMX uh, dongle here. I'm running just two wires uh, out to this. Those are connected to the, the pinouts on this um, XLR plug on the inside of the dongle. So then they come here. This is just a real basic little injector. I've got a 12 volt computer power supply uh, that comes in, taps into this. Um, now the wires from here all the way through this the only wires that are continuous are the two wires that I'm using to send my DMX signal. Um, everything else stops at this point. So these power wires, my 12 volt positive and my 12 volt negative, these both come in and tie into the, the other wires that I'm using in the CAT5 to run my power through. So at this point, when we get to this coupler, we have power coming from the power supply into the wire. And we have DMX signal coming from our dongle all the way through to the end. So at this point, I've got power and DMX together, um, which works great uh, as long as you're not pulling too much. Uh, the, the RGB node strings that I got pull a lot more power than I thought they were going to, and, and this doesn't work for them, um, which is uh, it's actually this is one of the strings that I've got that I took out here. So... This is the connection for our first string. Uh, 